So last but not least, T cell lymphoma. So optimal management for a patient with relapsed T cell lymphoma. So just. Here we go. So we have a clinical case, a 65-year-old, who presents with fever, fatigue, arthralgia. A few weeks later, he develops left axillary adenopathy, undergoes a lymph node biopsy, and the diagnosis is consistent with an ALK-negative anaplastic large cell lymphoma. PET shows diffuse adenopathy and the presence of bone lesions. Patient is enrolled in a clinical trial. I won't say which one. He achieved a CR. A few months later, he presents uh, with symptoms again, and a follow-up PET scan unfortunately reveals progression of disease, which is biopsy proven. Unfortunately, we see these patients pretty often in the clinic. So if I see this patient in my clinic, I guess uh, my, you know, my dilemma will be, do I use multi-agent chemotherapy followed by an autologous transplant? Do I use multi-agent chemotherapy followed by an allogeneic transplant? Or do I use any of the new novel agents? So what is that we face with uh, uh, T cell lymphoma? Unfortunately, as you can see in this uh, slide, this is data from the International T cell Lymphoma Project where they evaluated over 1,000 cases of patients with newly diagnosed T-cell lymphoma from different countries. And this was uh, the outcome with frontline therapy that in most cases was either CHOP or CHOP-like regimen. And you can see that nearly all failure occurred in the first two years. There is no plateau in both curves, the failure-free survival and the overall survival. And you can see that, uh, unfortunately, less than 20% are cured with frontline therapy. So how are we doing uh, in the relapse setting? This is data actually from the British Columbia Cancer Agency looking at patients with relapse peripheral T cell lymphoma who were treated with several regimen. And you can see that the progression-free survival is dismal with a median of 3.7 months and the overall survival, it's just a little bit over six months. So prognosis is poor with frontline chemotherapy, and prognosis is even worse at the relapse, in the relapse setting. So what do we know about stem cell transplantation in T-cell lymphoma? Few earlier studies suggested that uh, stem cell transplantation can cure uh, some of the patient with recurrent disease. But there are a number of key issues. First, to try to identify the patient who can benefit the most from stem cell transplantation, the uh, timing of stem cell transplantation, when do we do it? And then uh, um, also very important is to establish what is the efficacy and toxicity of uh, uh, the two modalities, auto versus allogeneic transplantation. So this is the current uh, treatment paradigm for patients with uh, recurrent T-cell lymphoma. So in terms of treatment, uh, we have to decide whether or not a patient is a transplant candidate. If he's a transplant candidate, then the choices are allogeneic transplant versus autologous transplant. In terms of treatment for salvage, we can consider single agent, as I mentioned earlier, or multi-agent chemotherapy. In general, for non-transplant candidates, we try to use single agent. Now, there were a couple of studies earlier on that showed that allogeneic transplant in the setting of relap relapsing disease can cure patients with this cell lymphoma. This is an early study published in 2004 by an Italian group by Corradini and colleagues looking at patients with relapsed refractory disease. These are the, mo the most common nodal types of T-cell lymphoma, so peripheral T-cell lymphoma, angioimmunoplastic and anaplastic large cell lymphoma. 17 patients were treated. You can see that eight had failed previous stem cell transplantation, autologous stem cell transplantation. The median age, as expected, being an allo uh, regimen, was 41 years, so pretty young. And the median follow-up here was 28 months. And you can see a very impressive progression-free survival, 64% and a very impressive overall survival in this heavily pretreated patient. Also, for the first time, we also uh, uh, saw that there was uh, definitely a graft versus lymphoma effect, even in T-cell lymphoma. 
four patients relapsed and uh, uh, were given a donor lymphocyte infusion, and in two patients, uh, they actually achieved the response. So pretty impressive data in the relapse setting, and this was a reduced intensive conditioning regimen. So this is another retrospective uh, uh, analysis from the French group, published again many years ago in 2008, uh, looking at allotransplantation for relapse peripheral T-cell lymphoma, and here most of the patients actually were given a myeloablative uh, regimen, and you can see here five-year overall survival, 57%, so close to 60%, five-year event free survival, 53%, very nice plateau in these uh, curves, and they actually looked also at the five-year overall survival according to different histologic subtype, and you can see that the best actually results were seen in angioimmunoblastic T cell lymphoma. Granted, the number of uh, patients was very low, 80%, but in six, 63% in peripheral T cell lymphoma, 55% in anaplastic large cell lymphoma, and even in other histology that have a significantly worse prognosis, one third of the patient had a five year overall survival. So, survive a five years. So, impressive results. Again, here also there was a response to donor lymphocyte infusion in two patients. And in multivariate analysis, what was important in terms of affecting prognosis was the number of chemotherapy received, whether or not the patient were in CRPR prior to transplant. And the worst prognostic factor was uh, the uh, presence of grade 3 for graft versus host disease. So this, uh, I want to present uh, two of the most recent study. The first one uh, is a study that was uh, published by Sonny Smith and colleagues uh, a few years ago, and uh, is uh, a retrospective study uh, using uh, the CIB MTR data. So they looked at patients uh, who were 60 years of age or younger, so these are younger patients, who received their stem cell transplantation between 1996 and 2006, and they restricted the analysis uh, to three of the most common histologies, so anaplastic large cell lymphoma, peripheral T cell lymphoma not otherwise specified, and angioimmunoblastic T cell lymphoma. Uh, to my surprise, uh, there were only 27 patients with angioimmunoblastic T-cell lymphoma in this database. And the primary outcomes were non-relapse mortality, progression-free survival, and overall survival. 115 pa patients were treated with an autotransplant, 126 with an allogeneic transplant, and uh, uh, over 50% of the patients had a myeloablative transplant, and 40% had an unrelated donor transplant. There were no differences uh, when they looked at median age, gender, uh, disease stage, and median time to transplant. But when you look at the characteristic of the patient who were transplanted, you can see how the median age in the allo uh, transplant group uh, was younger, 38, uh, compared with 43. When you look at the histology, there was also an increased number of patients with anaplastic large cell lymphoma in the auto-transplant group compared with the allogeneic transplant group. Also, the allogeneic group had more lines of prior therapy, so were heavily presented, and uh, um, 40 pa pa patients in the autologous uh, group uh, were transplanted uh, for consolidation after achieving a CR with induction chemotherapy and uh, uh, also a higher number of patients in the auto uh, group uh, had the chemosensitive disease uh, compared with only 60% in the allogeneic group. So the allogeneic group was heavily treated, had a higher number of chemorefractory disease, a lower number of patients with anaplastic large cell lymphoma. So when you look at the um, data for all patients, so those who were transplanted after CR1 and those who were transplanted at the time of relapse, you can see that there was no significant difference between auto and allo. So the three-year progression-free survival for auto, 47%, the three-year overall survival, 59%, for allo, three-year progression-free survival, 36%, and uh, uh, for uh, uh, overall survival, 47%. Slight difference. Uh, in the overall survival, but not significant difference in the progression-free survival. The results were much better in those who were transplanted in CR1. You can see one-year progression-free survival for auto patient was 
and overall survival was 80%, 58% three year for progression-free survival, 70% overall survival. Only few patients in the ALO group were transplanted in CR1. So when you look at the type of uh, conditioning regimen, you can see that there was no significant difference between those patients who received a myelo ablative transplant versus those who received a reduced intensity regimen. So this is really um, different from what we uh, thought, that perhaps in a disease that is so chemorefractory, you really need a myelo ablative a transplant in order to achieve uh, durable, durable uh, uh, responses. But it's not uh, true according to this study. And uh, you can see, as expected, the non-relapse mortality was higher in patients who underwent uh, a myeloablative transplant as opposed to those who underwent a reduced intensity conditioning regimen. So what about the recurrent disease? The same you can see here, there was no significant difference between auto and allo with actually patients who underwent an autotransplant uh, doing better in terms of both progression-free survival and overall survival. So when they analyze uh, patients according to histology, you can see here that the progression-free survival at one year and three years, which also translated in a better overall survival, was observed in patients with anaplastic Larsen lymphoma undergoing an autotransplant as opposed to those who underwent an allogeneic transplant. So you can argue that uh, a number of patients in this study um, had uh, uh, anaplastic Larsen lymphoma, and uh, we did believe that patients with anaplastic Larsen lymphoma have an overall better prognosis than other histology. Well, it is not true. This is, again, the data from the British Cancer Columbia Agency looking at a patient with relapse disease and looking at different uh, histologic subtypes, and you can see how patients with anaplastic Larsen lymphoma do very poorly. So, and this is the most recent study that uh, we published. This is the MD Anderson uh, Cancer Center experience, looking at patients with T-cell lymphoma who received a stem cell transplantation, either as a frontline strategy for consolidation or in the setting of relapsing disease. And you can see that uh, even in this study, uh, differences were seen in, uh, uh, in the two groups, the uh, auto recipients and the allo recipient. So the median age was uh, younger in patients undergoing allo. Here, they included even patients over the age of 60, so this is different uh, from the previous study. And uh, you can see that uh, actually uh, close to 40% of patients in the auto group were older than uh, 60. So this is very important, I think. In terms of histologic type, you can see the difference from this study and the previous studies that uh, here they included also a number of patients who had external T cell lymphoma. And uh, this was a significant proportion in the ALO group. You can see here 43% of these patients in the ALO group had extranodal T cell lymphoma. Also, you can see how patients uh, in the ALO group uh, had received a medium of uh, prior chemotherapy regimen of three, so higher compared with the auto group. And this is uh, the overall survival according to response to therapy. You can see that uh, there was no statistically significant difference in patient receiving auto versus allo in the relapsed chemosensitive group and also in the relapsed chemorefractory group. And you can see how these curves uh, uh, definitely shows significant improvement uh, when you look at the data from uh, uh, the British Columbia group. Uh, you know, with the auto group, uh, you can achieve uh, a very um, a significant uh, uh, survival now with a very long follow-up uh, that is uh, over four years. And uh, when they looked at the histological types, so, although this was not statistically significant, you can see there is a trend for patients with anaplastic Larsen lymphoma to do better. So to conclude, uh, I think a stem cell transplantation is a very effective modality and that can cure a proportion of patients uh, with recurrent T cell lymphoma. I think uh, um, conflicting with uh, previous reports, uh, I have shown you that uh, autotransplant is uh, associated uh, with long death benefit and appears to be particularly beneficial in patients with chemosensitive disease and anaplastic large cell lymphoma histology. However, stem cell transplantation needs to be Offer to patient early on in the course of the disease. Thank you very much for your attention.